Jonathan Abram is going to be the safety that the Raiders need that's going to take our team to the next level. Abram is going to be one of the best safeties in the NFL in the future and I want to go over today what's going to make him so good uh, and I want to show you guys some of his college film that's going to translate directly to the NFL. With that, I want to get right into it. And I want to show you guys his play recognition as well as his range because those two things are going to be key to his success. On this first play, you're going to see how quickly he's going to be able to read the play and make the tackle uh, on, the, on the ball carrier. But I want to show you guys something um, in slow motion. He's going to read this play and you can see how he tracks the ball. I mean, look at the range. He essentially went from one side of the field to the other side of the field and he made the tackle. Now, uh, his play recognition is super high, and you're going to see it in this play as well. Uh, look how quickly he reads the play. You know, uh, before the camera can even shift, he's already had read the play and has already disrupted the play. Uh, and then as far as him lining up uh, in the slot or over, over the slot wide receiver, he's very good at reading these screens, and he's hard to block. I mean, look at how he shifts and turns his body and jumps the gap. I mean, that's very nice right there. Uh, and he is, of course, a strong safety, so he'll be doing a lot of this in the NFL, right? He'll be liable for those screens. And lastly, I want to show you guys this play right here uh, because it's going to show his range. You know, you see that he comes in from 20 yards back and makes the tackle. But if you see it from the backside angle, you're going to see exactly uh, how much more impressive it was. I mean, look where he was originally at. Look how he's able to avoid this offensive lineman. And look how he's able to make the tackle on the running back. Abram is the best safety as far as tackling. And I really like that about his game. You know, he, he knows how to tackle. Rather than just grabbing onto a running back's legs or a receiver's legs, uh, he knows how to tackle. And, and I really like that about his game. I think one thing that's going to translate right into the game is his range, his play recognition, as well as his tackling. Now, Abram's range is super impressive, but his gap containment is equally as impressive. One thing that people don't often think about or understand about the game of football is every player has a gap assignment and containment and Abram understands that so he might not always make the play but he will always have his gap contained as you see in this last play and I want to break this down so you're gonna see Abram right here and you're gonna see the gap containment between him and the two corners essentially the slot corner has the inside gap of that receiver Abram has the outside gap of the slot receiver and the corner is gonna have the furthest gap to the outside now as the play begins the slot corner is actually going to blitz and jump that gap. So you see it happen right there, right? And that's fine, right? Now the containment's gonna change just a little bit, but essentially Abram still has that outside containment. Once he's gonna jump that outside containment, the running back's gonna cut to the inside, which is exactly what he does. Now look at Abram use his hands to get off the block. That's impressive, right? He contains his gap, gets off the block using his hands, and he still helps make the tackle. These are some of the things I really, really like about Abram. His gap containment is above a lot of other players that I see, right? There's players in the NFL today that just don't understand how to contain their gaps, right? Often they get uh, caught to the inside and they get hooked by the tight end or the or the offensive lineman. So again, that's one thing I really like about Abram is the way he contains his gaps. Uh, moving on, I want to talk a little bit about how Abram lines up a lot on the line of scrimmage and just his impact around the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, Mississippi State used him a lot to blitz, uh, put him on the line of scrimmage as his defensive end. I mean, they kind of lined him up everywhere on the field. In this first play, he's going to rush the passer, right? And look at how he sheds number 10. He literally throws that guy off of him, which is crazy because he's a de he's a safety. He's not a defensive end. So uh, the fact that he's able to use his hands like shown in that last play, it's very impressive to me. And he's he did this throughout his whole entire college career. You know, here's a play against Alabama where essentially he does the same thing, right? He beats the uh, running back, right? That's Damon Harris, a second round pick of the New England Patriots. Uh, here's a play where he just flat out blitzes, but he quickly recognizes it's a run and he's able to tackle the running back. Now, he recognizes these plays all the time. And again, Mississippi State blitzed him a lot, lined him up on the line of scrimmage a lot. And this is something Paul Gunther loves to do. And it's something that is going to translate directly into the NFL from his college tape right into the NFL because Paul Gunther does this. It's something that he's big on. Now, another thing that will translate is his hard hitting. Now, I love someone that can hit hard. 
uh, but I'd rather have someone that can tackle well. And of course, Abram does both. You're going to see some of his plays where he just lays people flat out. Um, you know, and I like it. I love the fact he's a hard hitter because it does put the fear into people, especially as a strong safety, uh, which is what he'll primarily be playing. Uh, but you'll see in this play right here, like the, the guy goes down because he gets scared, right? Uh, and I don't blame him. I mean, the guy's a hard hitter, but he's also a sure tackler, which is what I want, right? Uh, the the negatives with hitting hard is that's going to cause injury, and I don't want that. I don't want my first round pick to be hurt. But the fact he's able to, uh, you know, throw his body in there and make solid tackles is what I want, right? Uh, hitting hard is not the biggest thing, uh, but something that's actually more important for me is the ability to cover. Um, and I want to show you guys some of his positives and negatives because this is one thing he needs to fix uh, and work on. I want to just show you guys some of his positive plays first, um, and we'll start with this play right here. Uh, this is going to be a deep pass. It does fall incomplete, uh, and it's a nice play. You know, overall, I like it. Now, there's two ways a player plays the ball. He's either going to turn his head and play the ball, or, like Abram, he's going to try hitting the receiver as he catches the ball. I don't like that. Uh, I want to show you guys a few other plays that he does well, which is when he lines up off coverage, uh, and the receiver makes the break, as you'll see in this play. He's very good at that. When the receiver makes the break, he's able to break the pass up. Uh, I saw that often this season that he was able to do that. Uh, but what he really needs to work on is develop his coverage while the ball is in the air. Uh, because like that play I showed you where uh, he waits for the receiver to catch the ball and knock it out of his hands. Uh, that's not a good trait to have. And it's clear in this play right here. Now, this is a pass interference. It gets called. Uh, but he doesn't play the ball well while it's in the air. And you'll see how he starts. He has his ball. He has his head turned initially. But then he starts looking at the receiver. And he looks back up. And he looks at the receiver. And that's not how you want to play the ball while it's in the air. Uh, so this play right here shows me that he gets either nervous. Or he's just not that comfortable while the ball's in the air. Now, of course, it's something he can work on. And it's something I expect him to improve throughout his career. You know, the first year to second year, that jump, uh, the game speed will slow down. So it's not something that he can't do. It's something he's going to have to just work on. If you look at his statistics, right, he's been targeted 48 times in 2018. He gave up 31 catches. That's about a 65% completion per completion percentage. That's actually pretty high. Uh, you know, ideally, you'd want that to be 50% or lower. Uh, he gave up two touchdowns. He had two interceptions, you know, both some of those interceptions kind of just fell right into his hand, uh, hands, but overall, I want to see him keep increasing his coverage abilities, uh, but I don't think that's why he's being brought in. I think he's being brought in for a, a few different reasons. One is his leadership. Uh, he is going to be a leader. You know, you can tell by the way he carries himself, the way he speaks. Uh, same with uh, Cleveland Farrell, right? They're both leaders, and that's what we need. Um, of course, he's a rookie, so his leadership might not show up this year. Uh, but he also can tackle and hit hard, which is another reason he's been brought in, which is just setting the tone, right? His study habits is also very important. You know, I heard that uh, during the pre-draft process, he brought in a spreadsheet with every single GM and coach's first and last name. That way he knew them, other than just Coach Gruden, he knew that it was John Gruden. Other than Mayock, he knew it was Mike Mayock. And I know that might not seem like a big deal. You know, it might seem like that's just a small thing, but it is a big deal. It shows me that he preps for, um, you know, some of the most important things part uh you know some of the most interviews for his life of his life you know he preps for these things and, and that's gonna be important because it'll show uh, when he gets ready for for game day right um, so those are the two things and then the third thing of course is just his natural ability his range right him running from one side of the field to the other side i mean he's fast you know if you did not notice in those plays how fast he was go back and go look at those plays again he's very fast um, again he can tackle he can hit there's not a lot abram can't do you know, he was my number one safety coming out. Um, I didn't like Adderley that much, um, but I you know a lot of people like him. We'll see how he turns out. I liked Abram the most. Uh, another safety I like was Deontay Thompson, but of course, you know, he slipped and he fell. Um, but I really like Abram, you know, and I, I think he'll be a very solid player for us for a very long time. I, I think he is the one safety um, that, that's going to be the one to put it together for us right he's a good tackler he can hit he can do a lot of good things a leader uh, but i want to know what you guys think about him you guys think he can be on our team uh, for the long term do you guys not have the faith in him uh, and then who do you guys think should be our starting safety should it be abram should it be carl joseph uh, what about lamarcus joiner personally i think there's gonna be a good shot 
there's a good chance that we're going to end up uh, trading Carl Joseph, but we'll see as the season kind of starts and uh, the preseason starts going on. Um, but I want to know what you guys think. Please like, share, comment, subscribe if you guys are not subscribers. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos and subscribing and commenting. I hope you guys all have a great day, and I will see you guys next time with the Game Film Breakdown.